Yeah, Eritrean youth, a force for change and a bright future. Throughout history, it was proven that the youth are the backbone of any nation. Eritrean youth have also been instrumental since its inception in protecting and building their country against all odds. The Eritrean youth of today, although faced with many challenges, they continue to fight for freedom and democracy from different corners of the world. In this paper, I will be discussing historical and current involvement of Eritrean youth in relation to their country. Strong focus will be given to the role of millennial Eritreans in the current struggle for change and youth empowerment. This paper was produced for a conference organized by Eritrea Focus and the Institute of Commonwealth Studies at the School of Advanced Study, University of London. Pre-colonial Eritrean youth, besides their daily activity for sustenance, they played a role defending their regions governed by traditional leaders. The era of Italian colonization brought the name and boundaries of Eritrea, in which many youths, some voluntarily to fulfill their youth pride and some forced, joined the milit Italian army to fight the wars of the colonizer in places such as Somalia, Ethiopia and Libya. This time was also known for the era of apartheid in Eritrea, in which Eritreans were considered as second-class citizens and were not allowed to use services that white men used. The other generation of the 90s youth can be described as the ones who joined the only Asmara University in the country. Although very few in comparison with the total population, it is only this generation in the history of Eritrea that benefited from the strong educational system that existed in the country. Many members of this generation were also sent to second and first class countries for better education, such as South Africa. However, for these, for these in South Africa, due to the heated debate that they had with their president, their scholarship and ultimately their education was disrupted by the regime in Asmara and the Eritrean embassy in South Africa. It is also in the time of this generation that private medias flourished in Eritrea that played a read, reading role in raising many important questions about the country's affairs. These newspapers, although short-lived, they played a reading <coughs> role in the social and political empowerment of the people. Today, it can be safely concluded an estimated 80 to 90 percent of those who studied or graduated from Asmara University have fled the country and live in Europe, Northern America, Australia, and South Africa, and many other parts of the world. However, the worrying part is that only very few of these students, graduates of Asmara University, have and are actively involved in the struggle for freedom or in leading and empowering Eritrean communities in the diaspora. <coughs> Collecting the youth from all corners no, sorry. What followed was the current generation of millennials, those born in the 80s and 90s to the early 2000s, which served from the 14th to the 32nd round of national service in Eritrea. It is during this time of this generation that Eritrea's route to dictatorship became very clear in 2001. The closure of Asmara University in 2003 followed by the change in the educational system in which every 11 grade student at the end of their high school were forced to do grade 12 and military training at the Sawa military training camp, starting with the 16th round national service. I for one fit this generation and have joined the 18th round national service in 2004. Collecting the youth from all corners of Eritrea and in Sawa, it does not expose them it does expose them to learn teamwork and develop tolerance for the multilingual, multi-ethnic and religious groups that exist. However, indefinite national service has destroyed the fabric of the Eritrean society, making children to grow up without a father figure and spouses always separated. Many are also denied of the pursuit of life progress, such as getting a job, being independent, getting married, or having children. The National Union of Eritrean Youth and Students, although it prides itself for being democratic, non-profit, and non-governmental, in reality, 
it is completely controlled and operated by the People's Front for Democracy and Justice, the only political administration in Eritrea. A sister to this organization is also YPFDJ, so the youth element of it, that operates out of the diaspora, which often holds political seminars, entertainment, and group visits to their homeland. Eritreans demanding for freedom and justice have set up many organizations over the years to combat dictatorship in Eritrea from the diaspora. Among them, Eritrean Movement for Democracy and Human Rights, based in South <coughs> Africa, Eritrean Youth for Change, based in Auckland, Eritrean Youth Solidarity and National Sal Salvation, based in Ethiopia, Eritrean Women for Change, based mostly in Europe and Northern America, Eritrean Youth Solidarity for Change Global. Another youth-led organization is Arbi Haranat, with members both inside Eritrea and outside the country. A youth wing of the Eritrean National Council for Democratic Change also convened in Hawassa in 2012. A common phenomenon with all these organizations is that they start out very ambitious and most of them with democratic leadership. However, the leadership role soon fractures and both leaders and members of organizations split over differences. New groups continue to be formed by different groups. Their, their sustainability is yet to be tested. The historic lesson of this organization raises some questions such as what is the impact of these organizations in comparison to their objective <coughs> and what is their reason for their lack of sustainability. So, the youth of today need to understand at the root of their problem is the lack of freedom and democracy in Eritrea. Only their cooperation and brotherhood could end the situation. Hence, they need to work with one another, respecting their personal rights. <coughs> Developing tolerance, teamwork, work ethic, reading books, understanding Eritrean history, and recognizing that we are all part of the problem and facing the consequences together would most likely produce a way forward and cooperation and networking among youth. In conclusion, looking at Eritrean youth history through generation after generation, it becomes clear every generation struggles to correct the mistakes of the previous generation. The youth of today are paying a heavy price and continue to do so as a result of mistakes made by their predecessors. And I will conclude on that uh, bit there because I believe um, we're running out of time. So thank you for listening.